The Kutu Sikh is Chelik Yotes, Re'e Gimel, Lilu Nishmas, Rav Yasef, Ben Yamin, Ben Rav Ben Nasher, Kaltman. This is a Rashi Sikh, or really, truly, why Rashi does not explain this question that the Rebbe is going to ask. And the answer is going to be very practical and very real life uh, perspective. So let's see inside. Afin Pasuki, Yisischa, Achicha, Ben Imecha, Ibincha, Ibitecha, Eishes, Chekecha, Eireacha, Asher Kenafshecha, Baseser. This is the mitzvah about Mesis. Mesis is a person that tries to convince, to persuade, to incite another person to serve Avedazara, to serve, to worship idols. So the Pasuk says, if your brother, the son of your mother, or your son, or your daughter, or your wife, or your friend that is very close to you, like your own life, will come to you to convince you, to incite you. Rashi says that the word Yisischa is Lashen Girui, which means onreitzen, which is literally incite. In we'll use the word persuade or convince or influence uh, as we go through the sicha. Baseser uh, in hiding. Lamer to say to you, let us go serve other idols, other gods. Is Rashi Mefarash? Rashi explains as follows. Achicha me'av. Achicha means your brother from your father. Your paternal brother. Oi ben imcha. So Rashi is adding in the word oi the son of your mother, may aim. So not Achicha Ben Imecha is the same person, or it's two different people, Achicha is from the father's side, Ben Imecha means your brother from your mother's side. Asher Kenafshecha, later the Pasuk says, Reyacha Asher Kenafshecha, Ze'avicha, this refers to the father. And as you will see, the, the Pasuk, the Mesis could be anybody, a friend, a relative, a stranger, but the Pasuk is listing the Chavivin, those who are dear to you, close to you, because those are the types of people that have a greater influence on you. So the examples that the Pasuk gives so far is the brother, either from the mother's side or from the father's side, the son, the daughter, the wife, or the father. So the question that we're going to have today is why does the Pasuk not mention the sister or the mother? mentions the father, it mentions the brother, it mentions the, the son, the daughter, the wife, five of the seven relatives that are considered the close relatives, but sister and mother are not mentioned. Since this is a very basic question, which Rashi does not address, as we've been discussed many times, that Rashi tries to answer every single thing that is difficult, that could be a question in the basic understanding of the Psukim. If Rashi can't explain it, Rashi says, I don't know. But he at least he addresses the fact that this question exists. The fact that here the Rashi doesn't even address this as a question. So we must say that Rashi holds that this is self-understood. Or it will be understood based on a previous thing, uh, teaching that the Rashi gave. If Rashi says nothing, Rashi believes that we already we, we, we know the answer, either because it's self-understood or because something Rashi said earlier will answer this question. So this is the question that we're going to explore. Why does the Pasuk not mention mother or sister as one of the examples of someone who might become a Mesis, might try to persuade you to serve Avedazara, to serve other gods? See this. Seemingly, we could answer this question by first prefacing a different question. Since the Teda is enumerating those, as Rashi explains, those that are precious to you, those that are close to you, those that would have the power of persuasion in your life. Why does the Pasuk not mention a friend? A friend could be very close to you and could have the power of persuasion. And keep in mind that even though it says Re'acha, but Rashi tied to Re'acha Asher Kenafshecha, that it means a father, the, the, the one who is close to you like your own self, Rashi said it means your father, not your friend. So why does the Pasuk not mention friend? That it aims 
Ados main taker Rashi is on Pirush Asher Kenav Shachaz Avicha. According to the Reim Rebbe Leo Mizrachi, who is a commentator on Rashi, he says that that's what Rashi means. He means Asher Kenav Shacha means your father, but Vyechsar Oi. It's as if it's a missing Oi. Reacha Oi Asher Kenav Shacha. Your friend or the one that you love like yourself. Meaning your father. As it says, Punkt is Volkishtana because of the Acha Oya Shekinav Shacha Zavicha, Ulufizem made the Pasuk Echreacha Kipsute. The Pasuk means both. The Pasuk is referring to your friend or your father. That's how the Re'aim interprets Rashi. As is Abashvera Zaytas Agan and Pirish Rashi. The Rebbe says, however, that it's difficult to understand, to say that this is what Rashi means. Because then Rashi would have written it out explicitly. Earlier, when Rashi wanted to say that Achicha ben Imcha, ben Imcha is two different people, Rashi adds in the word Oi, Achicha me av, Oi ben Imcha me aim. So he would have done the same thing here. He would have added the word Oi if he if he meant to say that it's two different people, the friend and the father. Ubifrat as the lashon Asher kinavshecha is the pastos on uptach of reyacha. The word Asher, if you say reyacha Asher kinavshecha, Asher, which which is or who is, it's it's explaining reyacha. Who which reyacha am I talking about? The one that's kinavshech, meaning the father. If Rashi wanted to say that it means two separate people, despite the word Asher, for Rashi zicher get up a farizim as the pshat is oy. Asher kinav shecha. The Rashi certainly would have had to explain because of the word Asher that it doesn't mean Asher as a translation or an explanation of Reyacha, but it's a different person. Oi, Asher kinav shecha. Since Rashi doesn't do that, so we cannot interpret these words according to Rashi like the Reim does, that it means two separate people. That this brings us back to our question of Si'iv Beis. Why is Reyacha, why is a friend not mentioned in the list of, of those that are Chavivim Lecha, those that are close to you? However, we could explain it, albeit a little bit difficultly, but we could still explain it like this. We are including both details, the friend and the father, in the words Not as two separate things, Reacha as one, Asher as another, because we just explained in the previous paragraph that if that was the case, I would have said Oi. So that would not be the meaning. However, how will we say it? Reacha asher kinav shecha stam meint alle dargis in reyem asher kinav shecha. Reacha asher kinav shecha is a general description. Anybody that's close to you, someone that is a like, like a friend that is close to you, like your own self, anybody could be included in that. So oich asher kinav shecha. So oich reacha kipsutei. This would include even a regular friend, a non relate, non familiarly related friend. All the way up to the father, who's also a reacha shekinav shecha. So the father is the is the closest. Reacha, in a sense, is the furthest because it's not he's not related to you uh, 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 biologically, but everybody in between, anybody that is close to you. Where Rashi is mefarish nor the mechidish for his sofa afim pshat the hex the darge in reacha shekinav shecha zelvicha. So why did Rashi say zelvicha in that case? If we're talking about all different types of relatives. Uh, including uh, a, a friend, all oh, different types of, 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 of influencers, such as a friend, such as a relative, such as a father. Why does Rashi say, uh, say Azeh Avicha? Because Rashi is going to the most extreme one. The closest person is the father. So Rashi is saying it means even the father, but it could mean anybody else too. So that would answer the question why friend is not mentioned in the Pasuk, because it is mentioned in the Pasuk, because in Reyach HaShrek and Afshacha includes anybody that's close to you, including a friend. This will answer our question from Seif Aleph, why sister and mother are not mentioned, because once you have the spectrum of all types of close people, from a friend to the father, then anybody in between is included, including the mother, including the sister. And therefore it doesn't have to say imcha or achaischa in the Pasik because they are included in Reyacha Shekinafshecha. This is the suggested explanation that the Rebbe is giving in Sa'if Beis. However, the Rebbe is now going to refute that answer. As Blaib Tabar Shver, but this this remains a, this leaves us a question. Aleph, Harvaz Veren Ali Ibrika Kreven Wizgirach and Bifne Yatzmam. If Reyachashekinavshecha includes uh, everybody, then why does the Pasuk have to mention all the other relatives explicitly? 
the brother from the mother, the brother from the father, the, 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 the son, the daughter, the wife. Either Reacha Shekinav includes everyone, or if you're going to list them, enumerate them explicitly, then include mother and sister. Nochmer, additionally, Vibal, that's Pirish Lecha, Kosav Esachaviv, and Lecha, since as Rashi says, that, that anybody could be a Mesis, anybody could be a, a, a negative influencer. But the Torah is listing, is enumerating those that are closest to you. And this Pasuk should have certainly included the mother. When I feel a mother is precious, is close to her child more than her, her son, the brother from the mother's side, and in a way even more than the father. And therefore there is a greater chance of her being able to convince you, to influence you, because she's so close to you. And yet, the Pasuk doesn't mention it. As Rashi said earlier in Parsha's Kedoshim, on the Pasuk, that a person must fear or revere his mother and his father. Rashi says, as the he When it comes to kibud of aim, he mentions father first. Why? Because it's revealed to Hashem, it's clear to Hashem that his son is going to honor and respect his mother more. more than the father. Because she makes him feel good. She says nice things to him with, with, with her words. So, so and therefore, by has to say, of aim, that even though you honor your mother, your mother more, you have a mitzvah to honor your father as well. It has to say, of first, it has to emphasize the of. But what do we take from here? That the, that the covet, the respect, is more to the mother than to the father. So in that case, if you're listing the hachaviv in lecha, those that are closest to you, the mother should have been included explicitly and not relied upon including them in re'acha asher kenafshecha. So Sif Gimel is going to give us, the, the Rebbe is going to give us the explanation. The Bir Bazer. Rashi says the rule that Teda speaks in the present, which means to say that the Teda very often will say something, sort of limit, seemingly limit it, uh, even though it means a much broader situation, but it, it's, it uses an example because that's the common real life example. For example, it says, if an ox will gore. The truth is any animal that gores or damages is included in the same halacha. But since shoyr is the one that commonly gores, unlike a, a, a other animals that might do other damage but not to gore, therefore the Pasuk says, ki yigach shoyr. So it's diber hakosuf b'hoive. The Pasuk is using a, a, a common life example. Oichin dem Pasuk gufe. Even in our Pasuk itself, Rashi uses this expression. The truth is that any form of influencing or inciting is called mesis. So why does the Pasuk say baseser? Because normally when a person wants to convince someone, to persuade someone to do something wrong, they're going to do it in hiding, they're not going to do it in public. So even though the, the, the halacha of mesis expands beyond baseser, the Torah uses the word baseser because that is the more common life example. Doses, as the klal von Dibar HaKosuf Behev in late Rashi, is nit blois vences da brede zu schreiben zwei lesenes, klaib tus die Torah dem Lashen versus Behev. Der del Basik is zu lieb dem euch meise von lesene, wenn it nit dat dem Wort baseser. And the Rebbe is saying a very powerful thing over here. He's saying that there's two ways to say Dibar HaKosov Bahiva. One time, one way to say is that if I, if I need to choose between an ox or a pigeon, I'm going to say an ox because an ox is more common. Then sometimes I could go, get away with saying nothing. And nevertheless, the Torah is going to add an extra word because it makes it sound more realistic. That's the case of Besaysen. It didn't have to say anything. By Ki Yigach, it has to say uh, that it was an animal. So you could either say a shayr or it could say something else. So it chooses the most common animal shayr. In our Pasuk, he didn't have to say anything. He could have just said, etc. The fact that the Pasuk adds the word baseser is that the, that the, that the, the rule of Dibar HaKosav is so important to the Torah that it will even add in a word 
in order to make it sound more real life, more realistic. So from this we see that the way the Torah speaks is it speaks to us in our language and the Torah places an emphasis on this, even adding extra words to the Torah to make it more understandable, more in, to feel more in the present. The Torah speaks in the now, in the present. Based on this, we're going to have the answer to why the Torah picks specifically the relatives that it does in the Pasuk. Now that is it. The Balder Pasuk Yisischa begem a redag and I mentioned was by him can say Yisischa bincha ibidcha ereyacha shekinavsha chaza avicha. We're talking about a person that has a son, has a daughter, uh, has a wife. To say is that they're vaxen a mensch with a mishpacha and a vaxen a kinder. We're talking about a, an adult man, adult person with a family, with even with adult children. If his children are going to be are, are going to try to convince him to persuade him to serve a desire, they have to at least be adults. So you're talking about an established individual who has a family, who has grown. Children, is there hoive una derech haragil? So, if you want to speak realistically in the present, as there is sis chazal by him kumen nor from divas the pasuk rechem tois un nit von achayis chader imcha. The 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 more present, uh, more real life example would be that the persuasion, the the influencing would come from those people mentioned in the pasuk and not from the sister or the mother. As we're going to explain and see if Dalit why that is. But this is the Nakuda, this is the, the answer in a nutshell that since Dibura Kasuf Bahaiva, since the Pasik is talking in the present, the Torah chooses the people that do have the power of persuasion, and the mother and the sister are not amongst them. And the Asbara Baza, and here's the explanation. The Asasa Nilcha Venavda Lakimachin and the persuasion of let us go and serve other gods, Kinzain of Tsvefanun can be done in two different ways. Aleph through time is seichel ve'amuna through using ideology and faith, faith-based arguments. Ein nevasot ha'ashva and zveitin in yoni amuna v'kayitzav. As a person that has an as a impact, an influence on another person in matters of faith and matters of of intellect. And is there a mesis nilcha v'nadu l'kimachem makes a logical argument that that we should chas v'shalom, we should go serve other gods. Beis mitzat shachin shaft. Another way would be because of proximity. Because it's not exactly it, but one of the ways, you, one example, peer pressure. Because we live next to each other. Or when Iskarbos, Yisera, and Zeyaleb, and they're close to each other in life. But in your heart, it's the closest that one has with another. Because we're friends, because we live next to each other, because we know each other really well, one can influ- impact the other person's actions to the point of serving a Vedazara even without logical or ideological reasonings. So there's two ways. One is I can make a logical argument. One is more emotional. Come on, let's do it. We're friends. Let's have a good time. You know, without it having to make sense in the person's head. As is other move on. But it is understood. As even the first way where we're using logical or faith-based arguments. It, it has to be a, a pre-existing closeness and primarily a familial closeness. Which makes it possible to be able to convince someone, to persuade someone with such an a, a, such a, a, a weighty, such a heavy uh, uh, a persuasion as to change to go to Avedazara, and especially in hiding. And these are the two categories that the Pasuk is talking. So the first previous paragraph is saying that really a friend doesn't usually have that power of persuasion. Even if the friend is a very close friend, but if he's not a family, then he doesn't usually have that, that power of persuasion. But family is going to have that power and both some in the area of logical arguments, ideological arguments, some in the area of more emotional friendship, closeness, uh, influencing, but both are family. And these are the two categories that the Pasuk discusses. Your brother from your father's side or your brother from your mother's side. 
Usually uh, with a brother, you're going, to, you're going to have more of an ideological discussion than a, a more emotional conversation. Now the next day, and even more than that, when it comes to the father, which has an even greater influence on his son in matters of faith. Then you have bincha, bidcha, eshes chikecha. Your son, your daughter, or your wife is the ashfa nidurchem tzos from time eseichol vemuna. This is, wouldn't be influencing by way of logic or faith, ideological discussion. But it says heipech from seder aragil as bincha or der bidcha or der eshes chikecha zol nemashpi as I'm time eseichol vemuna. It's unusual. It's really not the norm to expect that one's child, a son or a daughter, or one's wife should be able to have such a strong impact on him ideologically to go away, to stray from serving Hashem and change over to serving other gods that you've never even known. But because children are close to the father, the wife is close to her husband, so, that, so he might go along with them. Not because they're going to try to convince him ideologically, but because he wants to stay close with them. He wants to be close to them. This is what they're doing. He's going to go ahead with it. So the Pasik is mentioning both kinds, both, both ways. Either, the, either an ideological influencing or a more... Emotional influencing. Aber he bowed as echter erster eifen von Yisischa. All your day time is seichel ve'amuna. Besese is al derech haragel shayach demot when they zayin when they have in kreve shaft zwischen sich genau. But since the whole concept of of this convincing, especially if it's in if it's in in hiding, in other words, if it's in public, then a person stands up on a stage and tries to convince people. It's not limited to family. But when, you, when you're going to schlep someone into a side room and try to convince them something, who are you going to start with? Who are you going to primarily be successful with? Chas v'sholem, with family. So since Yisischa Baseser is primarily family, the Iber is their posse kelel beidei fanem tzuzamen, u beseider from melamato lamayla in zer kreveshaft. Therefore, the Pasik does not go in the order of these two eifanem, doesn't choose to say first, uh, uh, the ideological uh, uh, ideological influencers and then the emotional influencers. Rather, the Pasik mixes the two together and lists them, enumerates them in the order of closeness. Because on the one hand, the Pasik is telling us that there's two different ways to be convinced or to be persuaded. But the, the, the whole thing is family-based. It's because there's a family closeness. And therefore, the Pasuk chooses to go in the order of the closeness of families. According to the Rebbe, the closeness is milmata from the furthest to the closest. Achicha me'av. First is the brother from the father's side. If he's your age and you have grown children, then there's a good chance that he has a family of his own. The connection with him is because you're both ears of your father's possessions, was to leave them which keeps them in contact one with another. So it's really more of a practical uh, a connection. Ben imcha me'im, your brother from your mother's side, mitim is dishayches in agresser amos mitzadem was yehaben ein muter. This connection is closer. This type of brother is closer because they have the same mother. Kinyere b'muchesh. We see very clearly, very realistically, that a mother brings her children together more than a father does. The higher than closer than a brother would be children. A son or a daughter is going to be closer to a person than his brothers. Closer than that is the person's wife. The wife is going to be closer to the person than his children. And higher than that is is the person that is closest to you, like, 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 like one with you, which is your father. When the river reckons they pasik and not them say and that's why the pasik lists them in this order, in the order of closeness, from the furthest to the closest of your relatives. So we we explained up until here. We explained that the we explained that the that the list of relatives. Uh, that, the, that the influencers are primarily familially related, and that's why the Pasuk doesn't mention friend, 
In this itself, there are two ways to approach it, either logically or emotionally, or in the lesson of the Sicha, either in Yoni Seichel Ve'amuna, intellect and faith-based, or or a, a, a shach and shaft, proximity, closeness. And then we said that the way the Pasuk lists it is in the order of closeness. In Sifei, he's going, now going to answer in that case, based on this, why mother and sister are not included. And based on this, we understand why the Pasuk does not mention the sister or the mother. It is not common that a, 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 that a grown man with, with his own family, with his own grown children, should have such a strong relationship with his sister, who, generally speaking, would also have a family of her own. To the point that she would be able to convince him to serve other gods, a god that you have never known. To say that if it's a brother, a brother because you have to be in contact with him anyway for Yerusha reasons and other reasons. So, that, so, so there's a connection. And then maybe if he has the right seichel, the right arguments, he can, he can influence you. But with a sister, it's unusual to think that she can have that kind of influence. And the same thing can be said with regards to a mother. Even though a mother, if a son does have a closeness with his mother. Like we said before, but by, by Kibudava Aim, that when it comes to COVID, a, a son is Mechabed, his mother, more than the father. But nevertheless, Hotzi Abrafim Nitkin Ashboa be in Yone Emuna. The mother does not have an influence on, on her son, with, on her grown, on her adult married son when it comes to matters of faith. Even when it comes to matters of, of emotion, it's also, if you're talking about the way it is, what is common in real life, it's not usual. We're talking about a, a grown adult with grown adult children. His relationship with his mother is not that level of close. As you can in Durdem Bav Virkin, Un Ibrishtel and in Amatsev to Dirin Nevei Dezara, that she should be able to influence him, impact him, and redefine him, that he should be, he should start serving Nevei Dezara. But a mother, a father, uh, sorry, a son or a daughter or the Reishat Chikach or a wife with whom you are living in the same house. That closeness is so much closer that it, it could have that kind of impact. So uh, a, a son or a daughter or a wife could have that kind of emotional impact on their father or husband. But a mother or a sister, it's unusual. They don't live together. They're not there every single day. So even if they talk and, and, and they see each other from time to time, but to say, to say that they have such a closeness that one can convince the other to change their whole life and become an Oiva the Zora, that is very difficult to imagine. And therefore, since Dibar HaKasav Bahaida, the Pasuk focuses on those that have the ability more commonly, more uh, clearly to influence a person to do this type of Aveda, and it does it in a specific order of Kirva, of closeness, but therefore the mother and the sister are not included. And Sivav, we're going to see this uh, 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 from our own personal life perspective, uh, from the, uh, a lesson from the world of Hasidus. One of the lessons we can take from this. All these levels mentioned in the Pasuk, the brother from the father's side, from the mother's side, the son, the daughter, etc. Also correspond within the person himself to various different strengths or faculties of the person. There's Midois, the emotional faculties, Seichel, the intellectual faculties, etc., etc. So what the Pasuk is telling us, from all of these levels within the person, they could influence him away from Hashem. When it comes to serving Hashem, you can't rely solely on the doing Aveda based on your Midas, based on your emotional feelings, based on your understanding, your intellect, because they can mislead you. Nachman, 
Afilu reyacha shekin avshchaz al vichav. Even your, the way we said in the pasuk, your friend that is like yourself, which we said Rashi said means the father. But avis but the regis hachachma, which in which in the nefesh adam, father refers to the level of chachma. But chay shelo di zachva na vedazara. Chachma in the, the in the person negates. Of a desire. We did out the Rebbe's Mevair and Tanya. The Rebbe explains in Tanya and Perikud Ches. The Chachma is Koyach Ma is the level of Bittel. And therefore, that's where the Koyach, that's where the Erin Seif is mislabish and clothes itself in the person in the Chachma because the Bittel is there. And therefore, the Alter Rebbe says in Tanya that all Yidin, even Nashim and Ami Haaretz, are Maminim Ba'ashem. And therefore, even Kal Shabbat and Mepeshi Yisroel are ready to be Mesa Nefesh of Al Kiddush Hashem because in the level of Chachma, it, 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 it's higher than falling for Avedah Zara. So, what does it mean? Reach Asher Kenav Shecha. Afo Pikein Kumta Deira Avifo is Dev Zayin that Al Tamen Ba'atzmecha. Comes the lesson of this Pasuk, how, how strong it must be that what the Mishnah says in Avis, do not trust yourself. As a filu mitzad, the madregi fun av, chachma shabbin nefesh. Even from the perspective of the level of, of, of father, which is the chachma in the person, he bowed us as his kinav shecha, as mishcha rana negiyah for his Since his own personal life is affected by this, there's a bias here. The person is subjective. You cannot be guaranteed to be saved, to be protected from Avedi Zorah. Even from the level of Chachma could come a, a, could come a, a, a persuasion away from the Eibishter, away from, from serving Hashem. So the Pasuk is telling us, etc., etc., et that a person has to be very careful. In a moment he's going to say what, what, what to do. But you have to know that if you're serving Hashem with your own Midas, with your own Seichel, even with Chachma, you are still not 100% guaranteed to, be, to, 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 to stay on, on the path of serving Hashem. And this is, could be learned with a Mikol with a, with, with a very strong way from the way Rabbi, what, what is explained in Hasidus with regards to Rebbe Yechelen and Zakai. He said, I don't know in which direction I'm being led. Even though Rabbi Yechelen and Zakai never went for Amis, Without learning Torah, without wearing tefillin, who pay shana lama delime Torah, and for eighty years he learned Torah and he taught Torah, so he was totally engrossed in everything that he was supposed to do right. So how could he? How could he be concerned? He was crying. How could he be concerned about where he's going to end up? Chassidus explains that it wasn't. It wasn't that he was concerned uh, 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 about the external, about nefesh ruach neshama, that he knew that it was taken care of. He wasn't either worried about yechida, because yechida shebe nefesh, the essence of the soul, is, it, it, it cannot be uh, 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 taken away from Hashem. It's, it's, one, it's one with Hashem. But the level of chaya, which is the, which is the makif, it's already outside of the person himself, but it's not yet the yechida, the Rabbi Yechimah Mazake was concerned, maybe my, my Chaya Shebenefesh, my Makif, maybe my, my almost deepest, most core of my Neshama, maybe that's not covered yet because everything that I did was external and it hasn't affected the internal level of my Neshama. So for, if Rabbi Yechimah Mazake was concerned about his Etzim Nefesh, then how much more so we must be concerned that even if we're doing the right thing, even if our Chachma Shebenefesh is, is guiding us in the right way, we cannot be 100% guaranteed that everything is on the up and up because of the fact that there is uh, a nagia, there's a subjectiveness that might ultimately lead me chas v'shalom, away from the proper path. So what do I do? How do I make sure to stay on the proper path? To be protected, guarded from being convinced by myself to go away from Hashem. We have to stand in a mode of Mesiris Nefesh, which means Mesiris Haratzen, to give up our own will. This is Hecher from Chachma. Chachma is still within Seder Aish Talshalos. Ratzen is higher than the, the, than the ten Kaychus of the person. When I'm able to give away my Ratzen to the Ebishter, then I, I've gone beyond Seichel and Midas, and that is how I know that I'm on the straight and narrow. Undamos Peyodos Eich. 
Avdi keiches matur mena, and then that could impact the keiches beneath it, the seichel amidus that they too should go in the way they should. Ani benik von av beginis chachma, starting with av, the father, which we said is the level of chachma. Ule matur mizra achicha ben imcha, the gomer, and then the other levels that are mentioned beneath that, as neat nor as all men zayn uzgihit from bavor and from yisischa, that not only should we be protected, that we won't be persuaded to leave the proper path. And to go chas v'shalom and serve others. Not other, but quite the contrary. Achrei avai lekecha tilecha will stay on the path, following the uh, the Eibush there. For I say to you, we will fear him. Ves mitzvah says tishmeida will keep his mitzvahs. We'll be kelei tishmon and we'll we'll listen to his voice, to his words. For I say savedu and we will worship him, serve him. We'll be sid baku and we'll cleave to him. That if we get involved, mitzvahs nefesh with mitzvahs harotzin, then not only will we not be in his place of yisischa, in danger of being convinced. To be to stray from Hashem, but we were gonna. Well, it'll help us follow in the path of Hashem all the way to Lubaisid Bakun. We will cleave and be connected as one to the Eved.